Hey everybody, Mazer here, and I'm going to be showing off a tutorial for a new program that I've just purchased. This program is called Click Team Fusion 2.5. It's on sale at Steam, and what it is, it is a program to help you make video games using a very simple point and click interface. And I've been playing around with it for the past three days. It's a lot of fun. And I would just like to share a brief tutorial with everybody on how to import character sprites, especially character sprites from RPG Maker, another program that I use. So what we're going to do is, here we go, we got our, we started a new application. This is our first frame, if it clicks, there we go. Here's our first frame, and for the background I chose the forest from Final Fantasy VI, the Phantom Forest, one of my favorite levels. Now, in RPG Maker, when you create your own character, you can take the sprite sheet out of the graphics folder and import it into this program. And it's just a quick drag and drop interface. So I'm going to show you the sprite sheet, first of all. And we're going to just put it as a uh, picture for now, just so you can look at it. And there you go. Now, this is a... Each sprite here is 32 by 32 pixels. And that is the basic output, output format that RPG Maker uses. And a lot of sprite creators that are compatible with RPG Maker stick to this format where each one is 32. So it's like here's 64 and so on and so on. Now, to turn this into a movable sprite, what we are going to do is, I have already prepared a single image of my little Mazer character. And you drag and drop him over here. And you're going to choose Active. It's under Graphics and Animation. You choose Active. There you go. This is our player controlled little Mazer. Look at him. He's so adorable. Now, the first thing we want to do is double click and that brings up this editing icon. Now I apologize, my recorder for some reason does not like picking up my mouse when new windows are open. I apologize ahead of time. Now, over here you got your basic Photoshop paintbrush icons. You got fill, you got resizing, rotates, view your hotspot, which is basically your anchor and we're going to put that in the middle for now. There we go. But the more important thing is down here. These are our animations. All right, we have stopped, which is your default. And you got walking, running, appearing, disappearing, bouncing, launching, blah, 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 blah. Appearing is like when a character spawns in, so let's say you have somebody rising out of the grave, you want them to do rising from the ground animation. Disappearing is when the character is either killed or um, has to be teleported somewhere else. You could set a different animation for that. But we're going to just focus on walking. Now, the first thing we're going to do is click on the walking icon, and we're going to choose which direction we want Mazer to animate when he walks. So we're going to choose when he walks to the right of the screen by clicking right down here. I'll do it again because I can't see my mouse. Right here, this little square right where the arrow is pointing. Now we're going to go to Import. And here we got my sprite sheet that I already showed you. And we're going to double click. There we go. Now here's our import settings. Up here, you got your transparency color, which if you click import as animation, it's going to pop up. You got import to animation, which breaks your sprite sheet down into various frames of animation. Let's go back to default. And then you got the sprite sheet option. When you uncheck it, you get the whole sprite sheet. But when you click it, you could set up a block size default, I believe, was 64 by 64. And then for the whole sheet, it's 128 by 128. 
but we only want to focus on a single image. So to do that, we're going to go back to 32 by 32. There we go. And we're going to cycle down here using these little arrows all right, at the bottom of the screen to find when Mazer starts walking to the right. There's him going left, and there we go. There we go. Right, so it's frame seven, frame eight, and frame nine. So we're going to go down here, and we're going to choose from frame seven to frame nine, and you're going to click Replace Current Animation. Hit OK. There you go. And you got a little three frame animation of Mazer walking. There you go. Now you can play it and it's going to loop only once. Now, if you leave this and just go straight to OK, let's show you what happens. We're going to hit play. And when Mazer, oops. That's embarrassing, we forgot to make him movable. So let's go quickly to properties and turn him to eight direction movement. There we go. Now he can walk. Now, when you make Mazer walk, he's going to do the cycle once and then just stop. So he looks like he's kind of floating in space. So we don't want that. Let's, let's get out of this. Where's my mouse? There we go. So we double click on the little Mazer again and go back to walking and the next thing you want to do is direction object. Hmm. I apologize, it looks like my mouse has decided to vanish on me completely. So for directional object, you're going to click right here on loop. This means that as he walks, the cycle will continue moving. And if you click on play, there you go. You can see him running as fast as he can. And we'll just close that. So then we will go to the next direction. We'll go back up to import. Select the spreadsheet again. So, I'm sorry, sprite sheet. And we're going to look for the animation of him moving to his left. So that will be frames four through frame six. And then loop. And there you go. He's running really quickly. Now you're going to just repeat this, which with each cycle of animation that you want. So we're going to choose frames 10 through 12. Repeat that, test it. And then his down cycle will be frames 1 through 3. Let's double check. There we go. So now, oops. Let's loop it. Now we should have Mazer walking in all directions. So click on OK. We'll click Run. And let's see him go. Look at him go. Look at little Mazer go. He is happy. He is in his little RPG fantasy world. Now there is a problem though. If you notice, he does this weird little jump. And then he jumps back when you let go of the keyboard. Now, if you ever encounter this, we're simply go to your stopped animation, and we just basically use our sprite sheet for these default positions. So we go to open sprite sheet. We're going to look for him going to your right, and we're going to just uncheck import as animation. We just want the single frame. So now he's looking this way. Oop. Sorry, as you see, there's an overlapping. So what we got to do is delete that frame. And then we'll just import the sprite sheet again. So do, 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 do. One. And do, 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 do. 
two. Looking down. And looking up. Where is it? There we go. Now, when Mazer plays, there should no longer be a little jump in his movement. There you go. Look at him go. He is a happy little critter. Now, to fix the speed of the animation, as you can see, it looks like he is running like a bat out of hell. So, well, oop, let's get him away from the clone so you guys can see him. What we're going to do is first we're going to go down, you right click on him, go to properties, and in movement, we're going to lower the speed. So let's lower it to something like 15. Now let's give that a shot. Oh. Now it just looks like he's running as hard as he can, but at a very slow pace. Now to fix that, what we're going to do is go back to his animation cycles, and go to direction options. Let's lower the speed to 25 and 25. Oops. Do the higher speed first, and then play. See, that's a little better, but still a little fast for just walking. So let's lower it to 15 and 15. Still a little fast, so let's go 10 and 10. Now that's a little slow. You're just going to tweak this to your personal preference. There you go. And you're going to do this for each one. Oops. And 12, and 12. Okay, and then he should now look like he's actually walking. There he goes. That's actually a very good speed. At least for the time being. Yay, he's all happy. And there you go. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how to import your character sprites to RPG Maker. I'm not sure if there's more efficient ways of doing this. I do know that our Clickstream Fusion will allow you to import GIFs and those GIFs can be actually extracted using the animation tool. Basically you just import it instead of a sprite sheet and then I'll show you. When you import a GIF, sorry GIF, whatever you want to call it, you're just going to do import as animation and then make sure the size fits and you should be able to just import the frames immediately but there you go that is how to import your RPG maker characters into click team fusion um, this is my very first tutorial please let me know how well I did if you'd like to know more please let me know in the comments and as I'm learning more about this program I'll be more than happy to try to answer questions or anything I come across in future videos so thank you for watching and I hope this was very helpful